Now, if you've been watching my five o'clock show, The Kenny Report, or indeed watching Paul Murray Live, you'll have noticed that the hard right politician who first came to fame for railing against government spending and programs aimed at helping Aboriginal Australians has lately been talking about how and why we should be doing more things differently to protect and support those same Indigenous people. Yes, Pauline Hanson has been visiting remote Indigenous communities and she's worried sick about what's happening, especially to women and children. Listen to the elders, listen to the Aboriginals themselves. It's their own people that's taking them for a ride. These are important issues to thrash out and uh, I, I agree there are a lot of Indigenous leaders want to focus more on personal responsibility but do you ever get the sense that you are your own worst enemy making these speeches when instead of giving us a hint of empathy there seems a bit of harshness and resentment at what efforts go into helping Aboriginal people? I care about these kids up there. Chris, I saw them. In the past few days, Joe Hildebrand of Channel 10 and news.com.au has highlighted how a group of Indigenous women desperate for more action on these issues formed a delegation to Canberra. They're all directly involved in these issues. They're survivors of domestic violence and abuse and they're supporters of victims in their communities. And while they met the Minister for Indigenous Australians last week, they were disappointed by a lack of interest from others. As Hildebrand wrote... In the irony to end all ironies, the one politician who met and stayed with them more than any other was the one being excoriated on that very day for her latest clumsy comments on this very issue. A lot of people will ask, given Pauline Hanser's long and infamous history of false and outrageous claims about Aboriginal people, how on earth a group of Aboriginal women could stand in the same room with her? To that, I would offer a more telling question. How much must mainstream politicians have abandoned and condemned these women with their silence for them to seek a maverick redneck senator as their only hope? It was a terrific article, but apart from politicians being absent, Hilda Brown also noted how the media ignored these women. Those swarms of press gallery journalists and reporters ignored this story. He said no one told us about it. Well, a minor correction, Joe, we did. Often government uh, representatives listen to peak organisations as opposed to grassroots individuals on the ground who know their communities back to front and who are concerned about the way money is uh, misused in their communities, about the way priorities are set um, by often perpetrators and bullies in their communities. And they really wanted to be heard. Uh, and an invitation went out to, uh, you know, politicians of all um, p political persuasions. Uh, we did only get to see uh, a handful of, of politicians. But in the main, of course, Hildebrand was right. Mainstream media ignored this delegation, the meeting with Hanson and this issue. This all sparked a bitter Twitter war between Hildebrand and Jack Lattimore of the National Indigenous Television Service run by SBS. Lattimore defensively demanded to know if Hildebrand attended a press conference held by the group in Canberra. Hildebrand responded that he couldn't as he was in Sydney and he doubled down though asking why the National Indigenous Television Station would have attended but decided not to report it. We asked Lattimore the same question and Rana Collins, executive editor of the News and Current Affairs at that station, said that uh, their station, AAP and The Australian attended the Big River Impact Foundation presser on Monday last week and that their station wasn't satisfied that allegations of corruption were adequately substantiated at the presser and due to local cultural sensitivities and breaking news, they didn't run it in their news programs that evening. They told us also that, as far as they were concerned, other pub publications present didn't cover it either. But while it is staggering that a publicly funded specialist Indigenous broadcaster would not even mention this delegation, the real point is a broader one, given the tragedy, trauma and disadvantage endured every day in this country where is the media focus on Indigenous issues? Often it's directed at symbolic issues, and to be sure, often the people directing it there are Indigenous activist, activists and politicians. Hildebrand rightly suggests we ought to do a lot better.